This is an audio Cambridge power amplifier that's uh, been kicking about in the workshop for a couple of years now. It's got a bit of a problem. Um, initially, the problem was the output stage had failed. Uh, I've replaced the transistor here. You see that uh, transistor that says new written on it. Now, they are a Darlington pair, so this is like a high gain amplifier system. It's built on the cheap, you know, with cheap components. You see these cap capsion capacitors, uh, nothing particularly flash. Uh, Pretty good audio quality, actually. Um, they they spent a, you know a bit of effort making the design good, but it's just using cheap components, and that's the big drawback with it. Now this amplifier had had blown up, as I say, it burnt out a couple of resistors. One of these resistors is this one here I replaced, but it's also damaged this um, biasing pot here, and I'll show you uh, the problem with that in a minute. Um, every time I touched the biasing pot, it used to blow the fuses. Now. I'm going to replace this bias pot. Um, hopefully, I've got to just work out what value it is. It looks, and when I've just checked, it looks like a 47 ohm resistor. I don't really believe that, so I need to dig out a schematic and uh, find the correct resistor for it. But uh, in the meantime, um, I just want to demonstrate why the uh, the dim bulb um, system is so useful on, on amplifiers like this that are a bit flaky and are a bit prone to blowing themselves up if you touch the biasing control basically if this biasing bias control is uh i've got a, a um an open track so i can set the bias roughly right uh, but if i touch the pot too far it basically puts the amplifier into class a really it just puts the transistors flat out on um and you'll see that in a moment i'll demonstrate that um now in a normal situation if i didn't have a soft link which is basically this is what this is like a rubber band if you like in in the in the power supply um it would just blow the fuses or if it didn't blow the fuses it would damage the transistors now there's still a risk with these dim bulb things that you're going to damage the power supply because the problem is this is on the primary side of the transformer you've still got these capacitance here that can dump a short surge of energy into the output stage and the and the various transistors and components and damage them so um, they are an excellent idea and i highly recommend anyone working on uh, any electronics gear to to make one of these they're so simple um, and, it, and it's a bit ironic really that in the modern technology with all the electronics gear around there is no substitute for a serious incandescent light bulb uh, when you're testing equipment for the first time, especially if you haven't got a variac or something like that, I have got a variac, but the problem with that is I can wind it up gently and it will all appear okay. I'll come down here, twiddle the pot, see a massive surge of current, and I can't react quick enough. Whereas the bulb will actually sort of take the take the shock for me and take take the load, drop the vanes voltage back on the power supply, and risk doing so much damage to the uh, amplifier. So I'm going to power it up. Uh, I just want to show you exactly what the problem is. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do much of a video on this amplifier because it doesn't really uh, interest me, to be honest with you. Um, it's probably a reasonable amplifier, but uh, I'm not uh, I'm not that bothered. What I do want to do is demonstrate the, the way the dim bulb works, and I also want to demonstrate what can happen um, if you've got dodgy pots and things like that. You know, don't always assume that because you've checked the potentiometers and resistors and things, everything's okay. Something like a dodgy bias pot can cause a lot of problem. Right, so I'm going to turn it on. Now, I've got it turned down to, I think I've got it turned down to minimum bias. So basically, you'll get the initial surge from the bulb, and that will dim down. Let's just do that. There we go. Dim down to nothing. It's a pretty normal current flow. Not worried about that you can hardly see it actually basically this 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 stage here this right hand channel is unbiased i think i'm not even sure if the left hand channel is the same it could be a, suffering a similar problem but uh, you can just about make that bulb illuminated there we've got this little led here just to show you that the circuit is live so i'm going to tweak up the bias pot very very slowly just to tweak it just to so we get a uh, better biasing um level and you'll see how far i'm tweaking it hopefully with the uh i'm getting in view with both the bulb and the screwdriver i'm just turning it up very slowly and can you see the bulbs getting very slightly brighter I'm just increasing the bias on the transistor watch what happens when it gets to a certain point i'm not turning it any faster you can see my thumb watch whoa 
okay back down again so basically the, the pot goes open circuit the, the transistors are biased full current you know and that, that will just blow them up the whole circuit's not designed to be running class a which is basically what you're doing um so what this video more or less shows you is how useful something like this is to protect the amplifier if i if i bypass this and did the same thing it would just blow the fuses in the power supply um, and if it didn't do that as i say it would probably do damage to the uh, amplifier itself so anyone working on one of these um i highly recommend it i built this one out of an old mains filter an old rs mains filter basically it's got a um socket and then i just put a, a, a switch in series so i can actually isolate the uh or disconnect the bulb basically short the bulb out so it goes direct and uh, run it straight through but uh really useful piece of get kit actually and uh certainly saves a lot of damage to amplifiers like this have got problems